All right, so that was about testing and training data sets, which the book calls cross-validation. The other thing that I put in this lab document is the simulation-based inference where we are going to be able to do inference without having our conditions necessarily met. And we're going to use randomization and the bootstrap. So randomization is the one that is good for hypothesis testing. Uh, and we're going to look at the relationship between two variables from that first year GPA data set. My Y is going to be the GPA and my X is going to be SATV. I think we decided that was the single best predictor for GPA. So I could look at the plot of the data. Um, and it looks to me like there is a moderate positive linear relationship between these two variables. Um, and so if we wanted to, we could fit a linear model trying to predict GPA by SATV, and we could look at the summary, right? And um, the slope is 0 0.00169. That's a small number but it's statistically significant according to the regression table. So uh, I would say, you know, I reject the null hypothesis and I think that this slope is significantly different than zero. But the only way that I can count on this T value and this P value is if the uh, regression conditions are met. And let's assume right now that those, those conditions are not met. Um, and then we, we couldn't rely on this P value. So then the question is, what could we do instead? And the answer is we could use randomization. So if GPA and SAT verbal were really related, then there's an actual relationship between like the first value of GPA and the first value of SATV, the second and the second, the third and the third, the hundredth and the hundredth, right? But if the relationship was zero, that slope was actually zero, it wouldn't matter how the, um, the variables were matched up. The, we could break the relationship between the observations, and that would mean there's no relationship. So that's the idea of a permutation test or a randomization test, is we're going to shuffle the mapping between the two variables. That's the same as sampling without replacement. And then we're going to find a randomization statistic. Um, then we can look at the distribution of, of that um, randomization uh, statistic. So we're going to run some code here. So this is the same code that I just did before. I'm doing a ggplot of the first year GPA data. The X is the SATV and the Y is the GPA, except I'm going to shuffle the SATV values. So if I hit the play button once, so this would be the GPA values stayed the same, but we just mixed up the relationship between GPA and SAT verbal. And so if there was no relationship, we might see a slope that is slightly positive like this. Or maybe we would see a slope that was slightly negative like this. Or slightly positive. Or slightly positive again. Right? Every time I click this, I'm getting a different shuffled version of SATV associated with GPA. And so if the null hypothesis were true, these are the sorts of slopes that we could get just by chance. So, uh, you know, kind of looking at these plots, I still think that the slope that we saw in the first one, that still looks pretty different from the ones that we've been getting when we shuffle randomly. So I think that this is still going to be significant with a randomization test. Um, but we're going to do the randomization procedure. So here's how it works. This is code from the infer package. So again, you might need to install that. You definitely need to load it at the top of your lab. What we're going to do is we're going to take the first year GPA data and then we're going to specify the response is GPA and the explanatory is SATV. And then we're going to hypothesize our null uh, hypothesis is that these two variables are independent. There's no relationship between them. And then we're going to generate 5,000 reps of type equal permute. So we're going to permute one of the variables. And then we're going to calculate a stat, which is the slope. Um, so we could break this down into um, smaller pieces, uh, like I could do just one rep and not calculate the stat there. So if I do this, I'm just going to get one permuted sample. So let's see, slope test. I'm going to have my GPA and my SATV. 
and this is going to be looks like it left the SAT verbal the same actually so it's got 680 740 640 but then it's got mixed up values of the GPA and it says replicate one because this is just one randomization statistic uh, and let's just put back this calculate stat equal slope if I did this for one permutation uh, sample um, then I would just get a single observation. So this is the slope of the relationship between those two simulated variables. Um, so this is what I actually want to do 5,000 times. I'm going to do it a bunch of times. And if I control enter, it's going to take a second because it has to do it 5,000 times, mix up the values, and then compute the slope and save it, and mix up the values and compute the slope and save it, mix up the values. Um, if it's taking too long on your computer, you could reduce that number. But now I have 5,000 observations where each row represents one time that I took the two variables, I mixed up the values of one, and I computed the slope. And then I put that in, and here was my slope statistic. And then I mixed it up again, found the slope, recorded it. I did that 5,000 times. So these are all slope values that we could have observed if the null hypothesis were true. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that slope test data, we have the stat variable, and that's gonna be our X variable. We're gonna make a density plot, and let's just look at that. So this is the distribution under the null hypothesis. So it's centered around zero. Uh, randomization distribution is always centered around the null value. And when we do hypothesis testing, we want to know how extreme our observed statistic was in the context of the data. So our observed statistic was that 0.001986. And I could just look at this visually, right? Here's 0 0.0015. So 0 0.0016 is going to be off here. If I wanted to, I could add a vertical line where the x-intercept is that value and it's of a red color. And that'll show me, okay, there's where my observed value was. Um, and so I can tell that my p-value, the proportion of the distribution as extreme or more extreme is gonna be really small. So it looks weird. I think we're gonna reject the null. Um, we might want to find a p-value. Uh, we could use the get p-value function. Uh, and again, you're gonna put in your observed statistic. And in this case, we want it to be direction both because our null and alternative hypotheses for regression are beta one equal to zero and beta one not equal to zero. So when you have the not equal in the alternative, you do a both sided, a two sided test, two tailed. So my p value is basically zero. So um, again, I would reject my null hypothesis. Okay. So I have said that randomization is better for hypothesis testing, but you can actually also find a confidence interval for this randomization distribution. And this is kind of interesting um, because if our actual slope fell in the interval from our randomization distribution, we would not consider it statistically significant. So I could get underscore CI on my slope test, that's my 5,000 randomization slopes, and this would be the, um, the confidence interval that if it was in that range, um, I would think that it was not significant. So it's gonna be centered around zero, which is our null value. And the middle 95% is like slopes that we could have easily seen if there was no real relationship between the variables. And our value was way outside the interval. And so um, we're feeling pretty confident that that is different than zero. Um, if we wanted to, we could look at the confint on M1, and that confidence interval is going to be completely different because these are reasonable values we could have seen for the, the slope if there's actually something going on, and these are reasonable values we could have seen for the slope if the null hypothesis were true. Um, so they're completely different, and they're different because one is reasonable values for the slope if there is a relationship, and the other is reasonable values for the slope if the null hypothesis were true. So they're very different ideas. 
Um, and then I would encourage you to try to do the same thing, um, test the slope value predicting GPA using the math score of the SAT or uh, using the high school GPA to predict the GPA and see if you think that those uh, slopes are different than zero. Um, and you could pause the video and try it out uh, and then I'll give you the answers. Okay, so when I did this, I found a p-value of 0.0016, so we reject the null. And you might have found a slightly different p-value, but it should be on that same scale. And for this one, I found a p-value of approximately zero, so we reject the null. And again, you probably should have gotten zero for this one, but it should have been something very, very small if not. Um, so if you got something different than mine, ask me about it in class and I'm happy to tell you how I did it.